let's get to this interview that we did with Dave Fenoy, voice actor extraordinaire and the voice of Hulu. Welcome back to the show, Dave. Um, it's Well, it's been a while, and since then, well, there's been a lot with Walking Dead. There's been a lot with all sorts of projects um, you've been involved in. So I guess the first question we're just going to ask is, what have you been doing in the past year or so, uh, other than Hulu? <laughs> well, I've been doing a lot of traveling, uh, thanks to The Walking Dead. Uh, I got to, uh, I was nominated for a number of awards, uh, a couple of which I won, so I was able to travel to... Uh, Las Vegas, uh, of course, some I didn't have to travel, it was right here in L.A. Uh, got to go to, to London, uh, too, didn't you? Got to go to London for the BAFTAs, uh, where I was nominated. Didn't win, but nominated nonetheless. Uh, I've been to uh, Malmo, Sweden, uh, for a, a Nordic Gamers Conference. I've been to Atlanta twice for Walker Stalker and uh, for Dragon Con, been to San Diego for Comic Con. Uh, it's been been a lot of traveling, which is very good, um, and a lot more notice. I used to be just a uh, working actor, and people in the business knew me, and and now uh, I've gotten a, just a little bit of notoriety. Um, so occasionally I'm even recognized on the street, which is just, well, funny. I, okay, I, I, can, imagine, I can imagine how the big stars really feel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, it's actually kind of ironic you mentioned about, you know, awards. The guy I think who won most of the awards last year was actually on our show last week. Uh, I think Damian Clark won a lot of them last year Uh huh. as yeah. Handsome Jack. Yeah. That's such a weird, weird role. He's he's really funny. So you know you have notoriety. So how do uh, how do understand how do people recognize you from voice acting on the street, or is it because of your appearances on all these shows and conventions well, it's, and so it's on? Basically, because of appearances on shows. Uh, you know, fans of say Greg Miller and IGN up at up at noon or uh, beyond, uh, where I he's interviewed me a couple times and we've become friends. Uh, if they're watching. Uh, him religiously, they know my face. Uh, when I was down at Comic Con, now these are generally places that that uh, we're talking about uh, people who might know me going to Comic Con and and people, oh wow, they're safe and all. Uh, <laughs> and uh, going to Dragon Con, where eh, you would expect some people to know you anyway. Uh, but I was walking around the Rose Bowl in Pasadena uh, a number of weeks ago and. Uh, I pass these two women walking, and one of them stops. Aren't you Dave Fenoy? That's Dave Fenoy. Uh, and she was very excited, and uh, it's always wonderful when you're a guy and women are excited. But uh, it was a little surprising. It wasn't what I expected, uh, but she was very nice. And, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm a fan of uh, uh, Greg Miller and, and The Walking Dead, and uh, I, I'm a gamer, and uh, you've been on this game and that game, and uh, – so it, it's been kind of nice. I, I, I haven't had uh, the experience that Paul Newman once had, uh, which put him off of people saying hello and signing autographs, which he was in a men's room taking a leak, and the guy next to him in the stall goes, hey, can I have your autograph? <laughs> <laughs> I think Morgan Freeman had that too, as far as I know. Ah. Yeah. Yeah, I guess absolutely. That just get a role in Star Wars Episode Seven, and then you have people stalking you in bathrooms. Yeah, <laughs> well, wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> and that, that's that's that whole funny thing that your mom does to you too, where uh, oh, why don't you get, why don't you get on that show? Why don't you get in that program? Oh, you know you would be so good on that. Why don't you get on that show? But mom, believe me, I would love to. It's not quite like that. Hey, hey this is Dave Fenoy. Listen, I want a leading part in your next movie. Good, good. All right. Uh, when do we start filming? No, it doesn't work like that. <laughs> yeah, we, we kind of <laughs> wish. We kind of wish. So, uh, any? I know Dragon Con especially is known to be rather crazy. So, do you have any, uh, we'll say, different sort of experiences when it comes to conventions? Like, you know, sometimes I, I think it was Damien said like he had someone sign. Uh, someone asked him to sign a baby. <laughs> and uh, you know, we had people you know sign all sorts of things. Have you had any like interesting? Uh, 
experiences at conventions or weird costumes or stuff to sign? Women that wanted me to sign the upper part of their boobs. No nipple action, uh, but the the upper part of boob. um, uh, Not that way. And actually, I don't think that is that weird. I've heard that happens quite a bit. Um, Actually, people have been very good, very kind, very normal. Um, which which I kind of like, you know. Um, it's it's nice to know that a, a performance of mine has affected them in a positive manner, uh, and that's usually what they want to let me know. So, have you seen any awesome cosplay of some of your characters? I imagine okay. Tosh. You've probably seen you a few. You know what? Um, I haven't seen any cosplayers playing the roles that I've played. Oh. Um, oh, I'm gonna cry. Uh, but I've seen some awesome cosplayers. Just some. Some people are so committed, and you know there was a time in my life that would have go. I would have gone. Oh, those people are just a little weird. Uh, but I've kind of changed my thinking on that. I really believe uh, these are people who have gotten in touch with that uh, inner child uh, in a very good way. Uh, when when you go to Comic Con or Dragon Con, uh, and you see whole families uh, dressed up and having fun, uh, it, it, there's something uh, kind of special about that. That is very true. So just to introduce yeah. who Alex is. Alex here. Um, last time you were on, you actually did a little intro as Lee Everett for Alex because he is a really big <laughs> fan. And yeah. so we decided to have him on for the next time you're here because uh, <laughs> that's what we do. Hey, Alex. Hey, Dave. How's it going? Oh, uh, uh, wonderfully. Just wonderfully. Excellent. Thank you. So, good. Alex, do you have any questions to start off with? Um, yeah, I do, actually. Uh, one relates to The Walking Dead. Um, if you don't remember, Dave, I remember you. I watched your uh, session with Melissa Hutchinson, uh, your, the Twitch, uh, uh-huh. where you went through The Walking Dead. Um would you say that the character of Lee has made a significant impact on on your career? Would you say it's a very defining point um, because of the oh, reception? I, without a doubt, without a doubt. Um, it has put me on the map in a way I wasn't before, and I was already on the map. Um, it's given me the look back. Now people go, oh, yeah, uh, Dave Fennoy, what a uh, great character in The Walking Dead, Lee Everett. What else has he done? So now they're looking back at Worlds of Warcraft, Worlds of Starcraft, and Metal Gear, and uh, 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 Fallout New Vegas, a lot of the ga- other games, and and uh, even cartoon series that I've been on, uh, you know, Star Wars, Clone Wars, and so forth. Um <laughs> It it's it kind of puts you in another category in, in a way. Um, I, I think uh, people who are listening uh, to, to or people who are casting probably hear me a little differently, or that because of the notoriety and increased popularity um, would like to have me on their their uh, cartoons and games. So I can't complain about that. Mm, definitely. And and when you were watching the the Walking Dead, because obviously you weren't playing it. Um, what was going through your head? Gosh, I could have done that better. Oh, geez, why did they <laughs> use that take? Ugh, I said it like that? You know, I, I think sometimes uh, we actors uh, are our worst critics. Um, yeah. And a lot of times uh, you you love what you do, and there's a there's a part of you that says, oh, I'm really good at this and I know what I'm doing, and another part that, oh, gosh, I fooled them again. They just, they just don't know how bad I really am. Um, so you, you, you've got a kind of a double-edged sword there sometimes. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, frankly, uh, I'm, I'm very pleased overall with the performance. Uh, it must have done something right to have touched so many people, but you you listen you, as an actor, you listen sometimes and you, you're just looking, oh gee I, did, I think I had a better take than that why did they use that one? Yeah, I, uh, it's not the first time I've heard that. I think that when you're looking at it from a very objective point of view, you can kind of think that at the time, in the heat moment, you could have done a lot better, but at the same time to a lot of people, 
it's as good as it's as good as it could ever be. Yeah, true, true. So when it comes to Walking Dead, Walking Dead was, you know, you said it was a defining moment in your career, but it's also a defining moment with Telltale Games, who, which before then was, I don't know, that not they very were, respected overall. Average, yeah. Yeah, they were they were considered average. So when did you um you all you know working on the on a game and Telltale themselves realize that Walking Dead was something much greater than they anticipated? Well, you know, I knew the first day I was recording that it was very good. The first time I uh, stepped in the studio, within 20 minutes, I knew, oh, well, this is very different. This is uh, great storytelling. Uh, this is not like games have been. Um, and uh, after the first episode was released and we got very good notices uh, from the reviewers, uh, we felt like we were onto something. We felt it would be successful. Uh, but as each episode uh, was recorded and released and the writing got better and the character development uh, continued uh, and the stories got more intense, um, it, it, you began to see that, that this really was something special. Uh, and then the uh, the award started coming, and uh, we won almost a hundred Game of the Year awards. Uh, and uh, Melissa and I have been nominated between us twelve or fourteen times for best performances, and we've each uh, won a few of those. Uh, you you begin to have an understanding that this is something very special. Uh, that you're very fortunate to to be in. So uh, I I couldn't be happier that uh, I auditioned and got the role of Lee Everett because uh, it it really has been a, a wonderful experience. And now we get a uh, Walking Dead. Uh, I guess they call it season two. Season two. Yeah, season two. Season I wonder two. when they decided to actually make season two. I wonder if it was before the awards or when they were making the first one because you know uh, that's a good question. I think they were planning on doing a season two all along um and and of course after the success of season one <laughs> gotta do season two well yeah i mean the walking dead has been consistent really it's been synonymous with the word success i mean the, you've got the graphic novels you've got the comics and you've got the games um and i'm just wondering if telltale anticipated whether this would be a, a big success. Well, you know, I, I don't think anybody goes into anything thinking it's going to be a failure, um, but the level of success, I'm not sure they uh, could anticipate having. Um, it it kind of is the perfect storm. Uh, the Walking Dead is one of the most popular uh, properties out there. It has captured the imagination of uh, especially the United States. I, I, I'm not sure how popular it is overseas. I imagine it is. It's pretty um, popular here. Yeah. That's what I suspected. Um, mm -hmm. But you've got this great iconic property, uh, and it was written in conjunction uh, with, with uh, uh, Robert Kirkman, yeah. and uh, the writers stayed true to uh, the Walking Dead brand and formula. Uh, and because they were able to do that and write such good stories and touch people, touch people's emotions, um, it, it, it's just a winner. Yeah, definitely. So I'm, I'm going to shift directions just a little bit because one of the things I've been really curious about when I talk to voice actors is, you know, their influences and a lot of them have said they, you know, they put some of themselves into the characters they like best, you know, the characters that they're best known for. So what are some aspects of yourself that you're able to put into Lee Everett or Tosh or, you know, Monkey Island characters? You know, the different characters you portrayed, what are some aspects of yourself that you see yourself putting into these characters? Time over well, the, the Lee Everett character in many ways, because it is, is such a human character, uh, he's multidimensional, uh, as all great characters are. Uh, well, I have a daughter, so I put myself in the frame of mind of how would I feel trying to protect my daughter uh, in, in such a situation, and that uh, really gave me uh, Lee Everett, uh, the, a, a real kernel of, of him. Also, uh, Lee Everett is a character who 
has uh, has some serious regrets. And I don't think there's a person walking on the planet that hasn't done something they wish they could take back, uh, said something to somebody, uh, done something hurtful uh, or, or, or stupid or whatever that they, if they could, they'd change it. And so many of us uh, are looking for redemption. And I, like many others, uh, there are things that I've done in my life from time to time that I'm not as proud of as I would like to be. Uh, so I, I touched upon uh, my desire uh, to be redeemed, to, uh, be, to forgive myself for things that I may have uh, done that, that, uh, that I'm not so proud of. Um, other characters, uh, sometimes a little more fanciful. fanciful. Uh, you know, if you're Gabriel Tosh, um, I'm not sure where I, I got him from, from, where that character came from. Um, other than, you know, sometimes you, you want to be ambiguous. You don't want everybody, as my mother used to say, everybody doesn't need to know everything. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so Gabriel Tosh is a character. You don't know if he's a good guy or a bad guy. And he's very protected. He's living in a very dangerous world uh, where sides can change at any time. Um, you, 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 you try to find uh, also conflicts in characters um, where they might want to do one thing, but that might actually bring them harm. And the, the, then the decision, well, do I do it or do I not do it? Um, you know, if I, if I look at a, a, a Pong Krell, I, I take a kind of a sociopathic um, autocrat uh, who's looking out for his own best interest, uh, so much so that it, that becomes more important uh, than the commitment he made to uh, to fighting uh, for the Republic or fighting uh, uh, against the Emperor. He decides to go with the Emperor. He, he gives himself to the dark side for personal gain. Um, and that happens with bad guys a lot. Mm. That's a fantastic answer. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs> um, do you have any questions right now, Alex? Um, not at the moment. I'm just trying to absorb some more. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> excuse me. The you know a lot of voice actors and actors in general, you know, when they were younger, they had lots of influences, lots of you know people they either heard or saw um, all the time on television or heard on the radio. So, who were some of your influences that got you to want to do acting and voice acting? Wow, that's a good question. Um... Well, you know, I used to imitate the, uh, uh, you know, Deputy Dog and Quick Straw McGraw and uh, some of the Warner Brothers uh, characters and whatnot uh, when I was a kid. Not not thinking that this is something I wanted to do. It's just you're playing and you're you're uh, imitating those things that you you care about. Somewhere along the line, I I stopped doing that. I I uh, went into music. I was a musician for a number of years, uh, got married, had a kid, realized I wasn't going to grow up to be a rock and roll star after all, and uh, uh, got a job in radio or started working in radio and became a disc jockey um, and uh, discovered voiceover while I was a disc jockey. And there were uh, people, uh, Percy Rodriguez uh, was a, a big influence of mine, a black actor who uh, had been in a lot of the so-called black exploitation films uh, and was huge in voiceover in the 80s. He was a voice of Pacific Bell in California, uh, so I heard him all the time, and he just had this wonderful voice and delivery. Uh, James Earl Jones, of course, uh, uh, as Darth Vader and, and many other characters, and this is CNN. Uh, uh, there's uh, Adolf Caesar, a uh, black stage actor in uh, New York, uh, who also did a lot of voiceover, a lot of commercials. Uh, that was a, a big influence of mine. Uh, th those are the people I listened to as I was getting into voiceover. Um, and I have to say I, I had the good fortune of uh, knowing and being a friend of the late, great Don LaFontaine, 
uh, who is the voice you still hear on your head for movie trailers. Uh, and he was just a kind and generous man who, uh, the workingest voice actor ever, uh, knew his place at the very top, uh, but rather than lord it over anyone, he, uh, he shared. He was kind. He was giving. You couldn't go to dinner with him and however many people without him picking up the check. Uh, I wouldn't say voiceover-wise, but in, in many other ways, uh, Don was a great influence on my life. Uh, and then there are a lot of people who are my contemporaries now uh, who were already working when, when I uh, uh, came to town. I've got buddies in the Animaniacs, uh, 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 Maurice LaMarche, and, uh, that, 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 too many names to mention that uh, I'd listened to as I began my career. They were already working uh, and uh, who I became friends with, and uh, they're still great influences. That is a great answer. Was there, the first time you did a voice, was it Darkwing Duck, or did, you, or did you actually do one before then? Oh, I did one before then. When I, uh, when I came to L.A., the first real animation job I had, uh, ironically, was on a game. Uh, but it was a telephone game. I played uh, RoboCop on the RoboCop uh, phone game. Where wow. You could call up and uh, pay, I don't know how Pretty much awesome. you paid, but... Uh, uh, and then you had various prompts, and depending on, you know, what button you pushed or whatever. I, didn't, I don't even know how the game was played. And uh, that was like 1990, 90, either late 90 or early 91. Um, so. Come <laughs> a long way since then, haven't you? Long way since then. Yeah. <laughs> So has there ever been a role that you did? You, I'm assuming most of them would probably be voice because a lot of voice roles tend to be the stranger ones where, you, you know, you're halfway through the role and you're like, what the heck is this? You know, you have a role and you're like, what am I doing? Uh, well, you know, uh, one that, uh, that for some reason became po Dutiful Joe, uh, uh, a beautiful Joe, uh, where he's this funky kind of rap hipster weirdo guy uh, who sings badly um, and talks a whole lot of jive. That was, that one left me scratching my head. <laughs> Beautiful that, Joe. That is a very, that the game is definitely very um, unique. No. Yeah, no, yeah, unique. There's the word. <laughs> okay, so in, you know, recent years, you've had a lot, you know, since probably 2008 or so, you've been consistently in a lot of the the big games, you know, Metal Gear Solid, um, even a prototype, Mass Effect, StarCraft II, um, Saints Row, you know, Clone Wars, lots of things and so on. So out of all, all those roles, which one would you say you worked hardest to get? You actively went out and worked really hard to get? Well, you know, that's, that's, that's interesting. Uh, I, I have never campaigned for a role. Um, I have gotten them the old fashioned way. My agent sent me an audition and I auditioned and they booked me. Um, there are roles that I would like to have that I've never gotten. There's, I, I, and I think if you ask any actor, you'll find no matter how successful they are, no matter how many wonderful roles they've gotten, there's, there are always those roles that got away. Uh, and maybe you didn't even know about them until you, you know, saw the game or the cartoon, uh, and you oh, wow, it would have been perfect for that. How come I didn't get that audition? Or, or one that you auditioned for and you really, really, oh, man, I would love to get this. And, and it just didn't happen. Uh, I was having a conversation with somebody the other day, uh, and they were saying, oh, man, I keep auditioning for all these Disney animated movies. And, I, and me? I haven't even gotten an audition. So <laughs> uh, having success in one area doesn't guarantee it in another. Awesome. So uh, yeah. recently, the oh, did you have a question, Alex? Uh, no, no, go ahead. Um, okay. One, maybe I'll do... So after this one, I'll, I'll just switch over to you. So recently, right. um, you know, with the success of uh, the Last of Us, you know, they at the end they um, revealed uh, some of the takes which they cut, and one of them they had Troy Baker and others singing the finale, the last part of the game. I don't know if you ever saw that video. Oh, I've oh. seen that. That's incredible. Well, Troy's a, a buddy of mine, and it's a uh, great game and he's so good in it 
Um, but no, I haven't seen those outtakes. Okay, so they, yeah, they revealed like the alternate ending, as they call it, where they do the end of the game, but the director told him, I mean, told uh, his female co-star at the end to start singing, and then he just joined in and sang his lines, and it was awesome. And I was just wondering, if you ever had like an, um, a recording session or even one in a mocap suit or something like that, where you just have a take where the director says, just just go silly to let silly out. Have you had any, like, well, silly outtakes like, or something yeah. like that? And, and just about every thing we do, there are some outtakes that I don't know where they're going to go or if they're going to show up one day, but uh, are silly or profane. Um, as a matter of fact, uh, there was some stuff from The Walking Dead uh, when it went to Malmo, Sweden, for the uh, Nordic Gaming Conference that... Uh, we, we did a presentation on how the game was made and uh, the sound recordist was there and one of the uh, visual directors was there and, and uh, myself uh, and another actor. And <laughs> the sound recorders decided that that's what he would do would be to play some of our crazy outtakes. So it's happened to me. Not that often, but it's happened. Is there any um, crazy outtakes you'd that you're able to or would like to share with any of, uh, imagine like Lollipop Chainsaw would be one would be just weird outtakes yeah, or, I, I or Starcraft. The, I the <laughs> Lollipop well, Chainsaw is another game I'm quite sure you were. What the heck is this? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, Alex, I'm going to switch to you for a little bit. All right, cool. Um, so I wanted to ask, I, I'm just curious here. Um, when you're performing a role, say just any role on average, um, how much flexibility do you do you often need to satisfy yourself to, you know, put this character, make this character feel alive? What do you mean by flexibility? I'm I'm not sure I understand the question. As in sort of range of uh, range of character. Ah well. I hear you know, the, the range of emotions are great. Sometimes the range of the voice uh, may not be. Um, I, 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 I try to uh, internalize things. I try to make uh, whatever, the, whatever the emotion is I'm playing, um, I, I, I try to come from a real place with it and let it come out through the voice as opposed to making the voice sound like a particular uh, emotion. Uh, I, I think that becomes much more genuine um, and often uh, not nearly as loud. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I I try to come from a real place as often as I can, uh, mm. uh, despite the fact that we're very often playing very unreal characters. Yeah. Yeah, I guess uh, with that, it, you, you could say that it would apply to you know, the characters that you played in Dota 2. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. All right, great, great. Um, let's see if there's anything else. Um, so there are rumors that you are apparently in episode two of The Wolf Among Us. Um, so... I'm episode assuming two of, then, of The Walking Dead? Of the uh, Wolf Among Us. Oh yes. Then. Oh well. Uh, I, I, I I guess that's going to be episode two. Uh, yeah. Yes, I I will be playing uh, Bluebeard uh, in in the Wolf Among Us, and uh, he's uh, an interesting character. Would you say that was as much of an experience as it was were with Walking Dead? Because obviously you're working with the same studio. Well, I'm working with the same studio, a lot of the same people, um, and the writing, I think, is similarly good, uh, the storytelling. Um, in, in, in many ways, it's a different experience because not playing the lead character, I don't have, I, it's not on my shoulders. I, I, I don't have nearly as many lines. With The Walking Dead, I'm, I'm looking at... I was looking at 1,200 lines per episode wow. where ordinarily game-wise, if you do 300 lines, that's pretty much what you're looking at as a lead character. Maybe uh, if it's very uh, dialogue-laden, maybe you go 600, maybe 1,000 for the entire game. 
Um, Telltale games tend to have much more dialogue, uh, and uh, this was no exception. But once again, I'm not carrying the load. Uh, but uh, you know, they they are still expecting uh, your acting shop to be uh, there. Uh, so yeah. I, I like working for them. I, I well, I like working for everybody I work for. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, but I, I especially like a, a good script, a script that allows you to uh, have a little more leeway than uh, sometimes the two-dimensional characters that you uh, uh, that inhabit so many games and cartoons. Yeah, yeah, I can completely see that. So uh, I just got sent a, a question by a uh, by a listener or a reminder, I should say. Um, in uh, Archer, you got to play a character that looks very similar to to Lee Everett, who I believe when when this character well, it's last season, so I guess it counts. Um, you know, when he died, it says you know it's like they compared to him killing a black astronaut, like killing a unicorn. So what was it like being on Archer, which is another very um, different sort of show that is very very popular among you know. Watchers. I am so glad to be uh, just a little part of the Archer landscape because it is such a wild and wacky show. Um, you know, there, there's some properties, you know, to be a part of The Walking Dead, to be a part of Star Wars, to be a part of Archer. <laughs> um, you know, my career is complete. Uh, no, I, I loved it. I love being a part of Archer, once again, because it is such a wild and, and, and wacky show. Um, and uh, as for your comment that uh, uh, Commander Kellogg <laughs> looks like... Lee Everett. Uh, I never thought of that before. Um, I'll, I'll have to put a couple pictures side by side and, and see and find out if the same artist drew them. And, and what's going on here? Is there a conspiracy? Is there more to this than this than meets the eye? Or not? Did Lee Everett become an astronaut? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Lee Everett happens. in outer space. Ooh, space a twist. Home. Oh, wait a minute, we got a whole Gravity thing here. starring Del Benoit. <laughs> space zombies. Uh, space zombies. Hopefully it's not like Jason X. Oh, <laughs> that was terrifying. Terrifying. Okay, so um, you, you do uh, television, you do voice acting. So what are some of the aspects of television that you like best and some of the aspects of voice acting that you like best? Uh, well, you know... Uh, I, I don't do a lot of television. I've been on a few television shows. I generally uh, have small parts and a little show here or there. Um, I, I like to think mostly because I haven't really pursued it. I like to think that if I actually pursued television, it would come my way and got my fingers crossed that uh, maybe a little something coming up uh, next year. That said, um, I really like the idea in voice acting that you, you actually can play uh, a wider variety of roles because it has nothing to do with what you look like. Um, more often than not, uh, if a camera is involved, uh, if you're 50, you can't play 30. Um, more often than not, you know, good makeup and, you know, sometimes they do a flashback or, or, or whatever. Um, if you're, you know, heavy, you can't play thin and vice versa. If you're tall, you can't play short, these kinds of things. Whereas in voice acting, you can, whatever you can create with your voice, you can be. That's, yeah, that, that and that's what a lot of people have been saying about, about voice acting. And then some of them even put a difference between like television shows and video games. But for me, they're, I don't know, voice acting wise, doesn't it seem to be pretty much the same? Television shows and and, and, and like a tele like an animated show and a video game when it comes to voice acting. Well, you know, um, video game acting comes out of animation, uh, but they're 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 a little different. Um, cartoons typically, uh, you're you're going for the funny, uh, typically. Not in every case, but uh, more often than not, you're going for the funny. With games, uh, 
we're, you're 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 taking people more often than not not to a funny place, but to a different world. Um, you know, lots of uh, war, lots of space creatures, lots of uh, other time places in, in space or or wherever, uh, creating whole other cosmoses uh, than the ones we live in. Uh, and you're trying to inhabit those those worlds with uh, these characters who are warriors and warlocks and various kinds of creatures, uh, but serious as opposed to comical. Okay, that makes a lot of sense. <laughs> so I, I try to absorb all these things. Be quiet. I try absorbing all these things, and it's, yeah, it's, it's why I do the show. I, li I like talking to people like you because you get to learn so much. Oh, well, thank you. So, Alex, um, do you have any more questions before I start doing my final few? Um, maybe just one. Um, I noticed that you are the narrator for Amaranthine Voyage. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, how would you describe that experience? Because, obviously, most of the stuff you've done, it's working with specific characters. Um, is being a narrator for a specific game... Uh, as exciting or as enjoyable, or would you say it's something well, you that know, stands, um, you know, stands on two feet on its own? I, this sounds a little boring, but I really like voiceover work in general. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, being the narrator uh, there is as exciting to me as as many other things. You know, it's it's not as huge a role uh, in terms of lines as uh, Walking Dead, but nothing has been. Uh, yeah. But, uh, you know, I when I get a commercial where it's just the tag at the end of the spot, you know, the, that yeah. is satisfying to me. Um, I think actors, uh, we, we love to act uh, and keep this under your head, but uh, most of us would work for free if they but uh, you know, when you when you enjoy doing what you do, um, sometimes it's it's hard. It's it's like picking your favorite child. Oh, which is my favorite child? Oh, I love little Junior. There, you know, you love it all. Some things that yeah. end up uh, bringing you more reward, say, than the other. But uh, and a, a career is built on uh, lots of different step stones. You know, there's. If if I hadn't done the work I'd done before, I might not have been on the wall. As a matter of fact, I know for sure. If I hadn't been in uh, Law and Order, uh, Telltale's game, uh, mm -hmm. playing a, a fairly minor character, I would not have been on The Walking Dead. Uh, Javier Espinosa, Telltale Games, heard me on that game and said, well, we should give this guy a shot at, at uh, Lee Everett. Um it's so yeah, many cool. factors. I, mm -hmm. I and I just enjoy working, and and uh, of course the dream is always that work brings more work. Mm. That's a that's a very admirable answer. That is a fantastic answer. So um, just a couple of wrap up questions. Um, I know you are always always uh, willing to give advice to people who need help. I know people talk to you all the time, asking you questions about voice acting. You do panels about voice acting and so on. And so um, I guess the first question is for people who just who, who want to uh, at least practice their voice acting or practice even narrating because, you know, you can there's a career in even reading books oh, and yeah. so on. If people just want to practice that, what are some advice you uh, advice you give to people who just want to tone their voice, get their voice? To be something that they can like, because I know a lot of us don't like hearing their own voice. So, well, you know, I'm a, this this uh, is counterintuitive, but I don't think what your voice sounds like matters. I don't think a deep voice, a high voice, a quirky voice. I don't think the quality of sound of your voice is what's important. Uh, it may define the area that you end up working in, but in terms of uh, quality of the work you do. Uh, although people, oh, he's got such a wonderful voice, but and and it's a wonderful voice that touches you because as an actor, uh, something about the delivery touches your heart, touches your head. 
Uh, you feel like you know that person. You relate to that person. You believe the performance. Believing the performance is the most important thing. I don't care what kind of voice you have. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's obviously a very big fundamental. Excellent. Um, and so I guess what – did you do anything to uh, – or say, when was the moment where you finally, you know, heard yourself on screen or heard yourself and realized that you're actually, you're actually pretty good at this? <laughs> well, you know, it's, it's funny. The day I decided to do it, I thought I was the best thing going. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I think I mentioned before there, it's a double-edged sword as an actor. On one hand, you, you believe totally in yourself. And in the very next breath, uh, you can't believe people are actually hiring you because you're so <laughs> awful and I fooled them again. Uh, and, and every actor I know feels like that. It's, uh, you know, you, you, you work you, on, on, on something, you, you won some awards, so, gee, are they ever going to call me again? Are they ever going to figure out I really don't know what I'm doing? Uh, and, and at the same time, you feel like you know what you're doing. So uh, I, I don't know how to explain that other that, than, than it is a conflict within us actors. Uh, you know, I, I know what I can do. I, I know how to tell people how to do what I do. Uh, but that doesn't always mean I enjoy my performances. I enjoy them while I'm doing them. Sometimes after I listen back and go, oh, geez, really? Really, Finley? That's where you went? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, so my co-host, uh, you know, James, just actually called me and texted me and is demanding <laughs> bumpers. And uh, the first one he wants, I, I don't even know if we're allowed to do it because it's, it's very oh, hulu you know And thank you because that reminds me, I did a, a show the other day, a podcast the other day, and I was going to do a bumper and somebody, uh, something came up right afterwards. I didn't do it and I forgot about it. So now I have to, I'll remember to do that. Bumper. Thank you. <laughs> I remember doing somebody oh, else's bumper now. <laughs> yay. Well, like, what, what he, the first one he requested is, I don't know if he, it's very Hulu-like, where he just wants something along the lines of, Bombard Radio is brought to you with limited commercial interruption by Audible or Amazon, since they, actually Amazon owns Audible, so you can just say Amazon. Okay, so uh, what, what did you want that to say? Um, Bombard Radio is brought to you with limited commercial interruption by Amazon. Okay. Well, Amazon.com, I guess. Okay. Got it. You still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Oh. And then um, he's the other one. Uh, what he says for the other ones is a, a bumper or two with just some of your various characters that you like to do. I think one of them he wants is Monkey Island because a pirate would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you know, this is Dave Fenoy or so-and-so pirate, and I'm on Bombad Radio. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm um, on oh, Monkey Island. I had a character like this. My friends and I would like... Um, okay. <laughs> yes, that character is if, awesome. If it's all right, um, I'd like to request one as well. I hope that's no trouble. Um, for a friend called uh, Eliza, who's a huge fan of The Walking Dead. Um, and if you could do one as Lee, saying something like, Hey, the world's looking out for you with Clem or something. Um, I think that would really make her day. Okay. Excellent. Awesome. Um, and I'm assuming you'll record these on your your leisure. Oh yeah, I'll I'll record them after we get done. Yeah, because this won't go up till Saturday. Should okay. Be Saturday. I I I should have them back to you later today. Okay, so I guess the very last question. Um, with the question we always ask, uh, we always give our uh, guests the soapbox so they can promote any upcoming appearances, any upcoming games, movies, or just rant, as some of them like to do. Well, um, I'm, a, I'm a Skylander. Ooh. <laughs> so now there's toys of yourself. I heard about that. I did uh, hear yeah, about I, that. I, I, I'm a Skylander. I play uh, Slobbertooth. And uh, so, uh, you know, you, you got kids or, or you're just a big kid, go on out there and get your slobber tooth character along with the other Skylander characters and, and play the Skylanders game. Uh, but uh, I'm also uh, going to be in upcoming episodes of uh, The Elder Scrolls. Uh, 
And uh, and a a few other things coming up. Uh, I I definitely would encourage you to uh, uh, get uh, The Wolf Among Us. And uh, I'll be Bluetooth or Bluetooth. I'm conflicting, uh, conflating my my characters here. Uh, Bluebeard uh, in The Wolf Among Us, who is uh, not the nicest character you've ever met, but kind of interesting. Um, lot, lot, lots of things coming up. Lots of things coming up. And 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 as always, I would encourage people to uh, like my Facebook page, Dave Fenoy, voice actor, or friend me at my uh, personal page, and follow me at Dave Fenoy. Awesome. I've done all three. And so have I. So thank you very much, Dave. This is great as always. It's great to have you on. And this time we didn't have the technical issues we had last time. We're kind of going in and out. Wow, clean and, uh, recording. How about that? Yeah, and you made – I'm quite sure Alex here is ecstatic. I am terribly happy. Oh, good. In total oh. British fashion. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So thank you very much for being on. You are so welcome. Thank you, guys. I, I really enjoyed it. Thank you so much, Dave. You, and I uh, hope your fans enjoy it as well. I'm quite sure they will. And if they don't, well, it's poo poo. Screw them. Exactly. <laughs> We're making them eat the poo poo. <laughs> right. Thank you very much, and have a great day, sir. You too.